How's it going, guys? A lot of you already know the backstory behind this beautiful ThinkPad T400. She is running Windows, and this is a no Windows household, especially when she's going to be running a version of Windows that is broken and can't even be updated. So we're gonna be doing some OS corrections. I'm gonna be switching her to Linux, and I figured this would also be a good opportunity to, I guess, record a guide on how to switch from Windows to Linux when you've got a ThinkPad or some other kind of laptop like this. Now, there's a few things you wanna to do to prep this OS adjustment. First, you wanna back up all of your data. That's the most important thing. So on Windows, generally all your data is gonna be right under C, users, and then whatever your username is. So your, do your downloads, your documents, music, pictures, videos, so on and so forth. That is pretty much gonna be all of your data. Now as far as programs go, you can't really back those up and you know go from Windows to Linux, but what you can do is make a list of all the programs because you're gonna have to reinstall them if they have Linux compatible versions or you're gonna have to find something similar that works on Linux which is compatible. For example, if you're using Microsoft Word, you're not gonna be able to get the desktop version of that. You can still get the browser version, but if you want a desktop word processor or Excel type of client, then you're going to want to get LibreOffice or OpenOffice but that can actually be tested out inside of a Linux live environment, so it's not super critical. Uh, and also you're gonna wanna make sure that your hardware is compatible with Linux, which again, that can be tested out when we go into the Linux live environment before we delete any data. Next, you're going to need a USB drive that doesn't have any data on it or you don't mind deleting the data off of it because we're going to make this a bootable Linux drive. And in order to do that, we're going to need a program like Rufus. Well, technically you could do this with the command prompt, but it's a little bit more complicated and we wanna make this simple. So go ahead and download Rufus from rufus.ie and I'll leave a link in the description of this video for that as well. And then you're also going to need a Linux distro to install. So with Linux, you have distros, which you can kind of think of like different versions of Windows, uh, except they're all more or less up to date. It's really just more about the layout and kind of how it looks like the desktop environments, which you can change, but if you're new to this, you probably want something that's set up pretty nice out of the box for you. So that's why I recommend Linux Mint, because this is, in my opinion, the most similar to Windows, like you can kind of see how a Linux Mint desktop is laid out here. Looks very similar to Windows 7, which is what I've got here. So we're gonna go ahead and download that and just pick whichever um, server location is kind of near you. And then we'll wait for that to download. All right, so I've got the ISO downloaded, but before we start up Rufus, let's go ahead and put this USB drive in her. So any USB slot will do, doesn't really matter. And then you'll get that sound from Windows 7, letting you know removable disk E has been detected. But we're not gonna go into it. So start up Rufus. Okay, and Usually it'll just detect automatically the right drive. So this one here, no label, 256, but you want to look at this closely. You don't want to accidentally erase a different disk and try to make that your Linux bootable disk because you may end up losing some data. But anyway, we'll choose this no label, 256, and we're going to select our Linux Mint 20.3 Cinnamon. Now for the partition scheme, you're going to want to choose MBR for an older laptop like this, a T400. If you're using a newer laptop, then you're going to probably want GPT. It basically depends on whether you're using a legacy BIOS or UEFI. 
and target system will leave this and then we can start and then we're going to write ISO in image mode hit OK hit yes and then hit OK again it's going to warn you that it's going to delete everything on your disk and OK So our drive has finished formatting. We can go ahead and close Rufus now. And now we're going to reboot our computer. And it also helps if you already know what key it is to get into your BIOS. Usually it tells you on the screen during boot time, but I know this one is F1. So you can just press that as it's rebooting because we're going to have to change the, um, the boot order so that we can actually boot from this removable drive here instead of the hard drive that's inside of it. Okay, so I think we need to go into startup boot. Okay, and here it is. So this one is already set up to boot from all the different USB options before it tries to load the hard drive. So this one's already set up here, but if you see like ADA or SATA hard drive, uh, NVMe, anything like that, the name of a drive, if you know, if it's like a Samsung or uh, something like that, you want to make sure that it's below the USB options. So We'll do F10 to save and exit. And now when it reboots, it's going to be in Linux Mint. All right, so here we have uh, these different options here. We want to just start Linux Mint. We'll just give it a minute to boot up. All right, and this is beautiful Linux Mint. I've gone ahead and connected it to Wi-Fi already. And this is what I was talking about when I said that it is a live install. It's not like Windows where you have to install it to use it. We're in Linux and I'm just running it off of that USB. So your drive that has Windows and all of your data, all of that stuff is still intact. So I would suggest taking this for a little bit of a spin and seeing how you like it. Uh, we can open up a web browser. Linux Mint comes installed with a web browser. And the experience of this, I mean, all web browsers are pretty much the same these days in terms of end user functionality. Um, I know Firefox kind of has a smaller market share, but you could even install Chrome if you want. That's what I think most people are still using these days, Chrome. So like download Chrome and if you go here, it's going to give you the option to download either a .deb or a .rpm for Linux. The .deb is which you would want to use for Linux Mint and Debian and distros like that. Uh, there is also a software store on Linux Mint. Well, software manager, pretty much every Linux distro comes with a software manager. This is something that 
Windows hasn't even gotten into until very recently. It used to be you had to go onto the internet to download all your software, which is one way that viruses very commonly propagate on Windows. But anyway, uh, editor's picks. So these are kind of some of the more common apps that people would want to use. Spotify is on here, Google Maps. Uh, MPV and VLC, these are video players, which, well, VLC also works on Windows. So does MPV now that I think about it, but a lot of Windows users are probably familiar with VLC. Uh, Steam, Blender, if you wanted to do some kind of uh, video editing or 3D editing. And yeah, you can also search for things up here as well. So like LibreOffice, that's the Office suite that I was telling you about. Actually, no, that's already installed. So yeah, here are basically like your Microsoft Word equivalent, uh, your Microsoft Excel equivalent, and Impress, that's sort of like your slideshow equivalent or whatever the Windows app is called. So yeah, you could try these out as well and make sure that it's actually to your liking. There's a couple of Office alternatives that you can do on Linux and also you could use Office Online or 365, whatever it's called, the browser version, because again, everything that worked on your browser in Windows is gonna work on your browser in Linux. And you can stay inside of this USB as much as you want. And if you wanna go back to Linux, uh, if you're not going to install it, you can just take the drive out and reboot the computer and then it's going to automatically boot into Windows for you. But we're going to make the switch. We're going to plunge forth and I'm just going to close all these right now because we don't need them. So we're going to want to click on this icon on the desktop, install Linux Mint, and it's going to walk us through that process. Again, very easy to do just like installing Windows. So we'll continue, it's already selected our language, you would want to change it there, and it's already got my keyboard layout. And we'll want to check the box to install multimedia codecs, so this is going to install some proprietary codecs that are necessary. Well, it tells you right here, it's necessary for video formats to properly render on some websites. All right, and then here, it actually will give you an option to dual boot. So if you wanted to install Linux alongside Windows, but I'm going to erase the disk because I don't want to use Windows. We'll install now. We'll hit continue. And then pick our time zone. And let's see, what will we name this computer? Oh, it's already going to do that. Hmm, we'll call it free. So it's a free ThinkPad T420. And we'll go ahead and pick a password. And we're gonna require the password to log in, and then you can also encrypt your home folder if you want, but I'll skip that step. All right, and then we can just kick back and wait a few minutes, maybe 10 or 15, kind of depends on your disk, whether you have a hard drive or SSD for it to install. We'll let it do its thing and we'll come back in a little bit.
So finally, we get this message that the installation has finished and we can continue testing Linux Mint or we can restart into it loaded off of the hard drive. So let's go ahead now and restart to finalize this installation. Here it tells us to remove the installation medium, so take out the flash drive and hit enter. Here we have the login welcome screen. Go ahead and put in my password. And just give her a moment to load the desktop. She's only got, I think, two, maybe three gigs of RAM in her. Hey! Listen to that lovely sound. That's what Linux Mint sounds like when it starts up. And you even get this nice prompt that comes up to give you first steps into personalizing your system and you also get access to some documentation. I believe there's bookmarks as well for uh, Linux Mint forums in case you had any questions about your new operating system. But hopefully, you were able to answer most of those directly by you trying it out. And uh, let's see. Uh, no, they actually don't seem to have those bookmarks anymore. But that's fine. You can still go to the Linux Mint website yourself to get that. Or, oh yeah, there we go. You just click launch and it brings you to the documentation on their website. So now we have a computer that's going to be much better behaved now that she is using a free and open source operating system. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to share it with your friends, like and comment to hack the algorithm, and have a great rest of your day. Peace.